and the creation of the 1937 movie, They Won't Forget. The casting process was a crucial aspect of its success. The film marked a pivotal moment in the career of its director, Mervyn Leroy, who aimed to assemble a talented cast that would bring his vision to life. For the role of Andy Griffin, a young and ambitious district attorney, Leroy sought an actor with charisma and intensity. He found his ideal candidate in Claude Rains, a seasoned stage actor who had recently made a successful transition to film. Rains' ability to convey vulnerability and determination made him the perfect fit for the part. The film's female lead, Southern Belle Mary Clay, required an actress who could portray both strength and vulnerability. Leroy turned to Lana Turner, a young and relatively unknown actress at the time. Her striking beauty and natural talent caught the director's eye, and he saw in her the potential to become a major star. To play the role of the schoolteacher, Miss Vita, Leroy cast Gloria Dixon, who had previously worked with him on the film Three on a Match. Her ability to convey warmth and compassion made her the ideal choice for the part. The casting of the film's supporting roles was equally meticulous. For the role of the newspaper reporter, Leroy cast Claude Gillingwater, a veteran actor with extensive stage experience. His ability to bring depth and nuance to the character added to the film's richness. The movie's villain, the racist and manipulative politician, was played by Otto Kruger. Kruger's ability to convey menace and cunning made him the perfect fit for the part. The casting of They Won't Forget was a testament to Mervyn Leroy's ability to identify and nurture talent. The film's success was due in large part to the chemistry between its cast members, who brought to life a story that resonated with audiences of the time and continues to do so today. Mervyn Leroy, the director of They Won't Forget, was known for his realistic and gripping style. He aimed to create a vivid portrayal of small-town America and the social issues that permeated it. Leroy's approach was deeply influenced by the socially conscious films of the 1930s, as well as the German Expressionist movement, which emphasized visual storytelling. And they won't forget, Leroy employed a number of innovative techniques to bring the story to life. He made use of low-angle shots to create a sense of tension and foreboding, while his use of charoscuro lighting added a film noir aesthetic to the film. Leroy also worked closely with his cinematographer, Ernest Haller, to create a visual language that complemented the narrative. Leroy's collaboration with the cast was equally important. He worked closely with actors like Claude Rains, Gloria Dixon, and Lana Turner to develop their characters and ensure that their performances were grounded in reality. Leroy believed in giving his actors the freedom to explore their roles, and he often encouraged improvisation on set. The result of Leroy's vision and collaborative approach was a film that was both powerful and thought-provoking. They won't forget tackled issues of race, justice, and mob mentality, and it remains a classic example of the socially conscious films of the 1930s. Leroy's ability to create a vivid and immersive world, combined with his commitment to exploring complex social issues, made They Won't Forget a landmark film in the history of American cinema. They Won't Forget is a powerful movie from 1937 that leaves a lasting impression with its compelling storyline. This classic features many memorable roles, but one of my favorites is the character played by Lana Turner. Her captivating performance adds depth to the film. A particular scene that resonates with me is when the community comes together in the face of tragedy, highlighting the complexities of human nature. It's a poignant moment that demonstrates the power of unity. As you watch this movie, you'll discover many surprising, humorous, and emotional moments. Keep in mind, there are fascinating facts and anecdotes yet to come, so stay tuned. Do you have a favorite character or scene from this classic? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share your most cherished experiences related to They Won't Forget and become a part of its enduring legacy. In the late 1930s, Mervyn Leroy directed the hard-hitting crime drama They Won't Forget. The movie took shape in a world buzzing with racial tension and social change. Set against the backdrop of the Deep South, the film aimed to expose the harsh realities of prejudice and mob mentality. To create the stifling atmosphere of the fictional town of Westbury, Georgia, the production design team transformed the Warner Brothers Studios backlot into a bustling southern community. They built a variety of sets, including a courthouse, a newspaper office, and residential streets lined with modest houses. To ensure historical accuracy, the art department researched the architectural styles 
and materials commonly used in the early 20th century South. Despite the controlled environment of the studio lot, filming presented several logistical challenges. For instance, the production required a large cast and crew, making it difficult to coordinate scenes and manage resources. Additionally, the film's intense subject matter demanded careful handling to avoid inflaming tensions or causing offense. To capture the essence of the Deep South, the filmmakers ventured beyond the studio gates. They shot several exterior scenes on location in Marietta and Atlanta, Georgia, lending authenticity to the production. The use of real-world settings also allowed the film to showcase the region's natural beauty and distinctive charm. Among the innovative techniques employed during the production of They Won't Forget was the use of high-contrast lighting. Cinematographer Ernest Haller utilized this method to create a sense of foreboding and tension, further emphasizing the film's dark themes. This approach involved placing strong lights and shadows in strategic positions to heighten the emotional impact of each scene. In conclusion, the production of They Won't Forget was a complex undertaking that required careful planning, coordination, and execution. Through its evocative set design, atmospheric locations, and groundbreaking cinematography, the film stands as a testament to the power of cinema to confront social issues and provoke thoughtful dialogue. The movie They Won't Forget, released in 1937, is a classic example of an early courtroom drama. This film, directed by Mervyn Leroy, tells the story of a small town teacher who becomes the prime suspect in the murder of a young girl. The movie is notable for its exploration of racial prejudice and the manipulation of the media in shaping public opinion. The film features a talented cast, including Claude Rains, who plays the role of the accused teacher, and Lana Turner, who made her film debut as the murder victim. The movie also includes a number of notable character actors, such as Edward Norris, who plays the prosecutor, and Aline Jocelyn, who portrays the defense attorney. They Won't Forget was based on a novel by Ward Green, and the screenplay was written by Robert Rossinator. The film was shot on location in and around Atlanta, Georgia, which adds to the film's sense of realism. The movie score, composed by Adolf Deutsch, also contributes to the film's atmosphere with its haunting melodies and dramatic crescendos. The movie's themes of racial prejudice and media manipulation are still relevant today, making They Won't Forget a timeless classic. The film's exploration of these issues is subtle but powerful, and it serves as a reminder of the dangers of jumping to conclusions and allowing prejudice to cloud our judgment. In conclusion, They Won't Forget is a well-crafted and thought-provoking film that is worth watching for fans of classic cinema. Its exploration of timely themes and strong performances make it a standout example of early courtroom dramas. In the creation of They Won't Forget, music played a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone. The film score was composed by Adolf Deutsch, who was known for his innovative approach to film music. He believed that the score should not overpower the scenes but subtly enhance them. The movie's opening theme sets a somber and ominous tone, mirroring the looming tragedy that unfolds. The use of a minor key and slow tempo creates a sense of foreboding, perfectly complementing the film's opening sequence. Deutsch's score also underscores the emotional turmoil of the characters. For instance, when the character of Andy Griffin faces accusations, the music intensifies, reflecting his growing anxiety and fear. The use of percussive elements and dissonant chords creates a sense of chaos and confusion, echoing the character's inner turmoil. On the other hand, the soundtrack features songs that contrast with the score, providing moments of relief and levity. The song Dixie, often associated with the American South, is used to highlight the regional setting and create a sense of place. Interestingly, the film's soundtrack also includes diegetic music, such as the jazz tunes played in the local club. This adds to the film's authenticity, immersing the audience in the era and location. Deutsch's work on They Won't Forget is a testament to his ability to craft music that complements the narrative and emotional tone. His score and the film's soundtrack are integral to the overall impact of this classic. In 1937, an unknown teenager named Judy Turner got her big break in the movie industry with a film called They Won't Forget. She played a small but memorable role, which led to her being discovered by a columnist who gave her the new name Lana Turner. The 12 minutes she spent on screen left a lasting impression, particularly during a 75-foot tracking shot that followed her walking down the street in a tight sweater, skirt, and spiked heels. 
This scene was crucial to the plot, as it was meant to suggest a flesh impact to make the film's sex murder theme more apparent. Interestingly, Lana Turner's daughter, who was born in 1938, did not see her father, Claude Rain, in a film until 1950. They watched The Invisible Man together in a small theater in Pennsylvania. Rains, who played the lead role, explained the making of the film to his daughter as they watched, capturing the attention of the other theatergoers who were more interested in his stories than the movie itself. It was just one of Rains' many iconic roles that cemented his place in Hollywood history. Despite the film's controversial theme, they won't forget is widely regarded as the movie that launched Lana Turner's successful career. Her performance in the film, though brief, was enough to catch the eye of film critics and movie egoers, and her name quickly became synonymous with Hollywood glamour. Today, the movie remains a classic example of the film noir genre, and Lana Turner's legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors around the world. In the movie They Won't Forget, one of the most iconic scenes is the courtroom sequence. The director, Mervyn Leroy, masterfully builds tension through tight framing and close-ups of the characters' faces. This heightens the audience's emotional investment in the outcome. Notably, the use of low-key lighting enhances the dramatic atmosphere, casting dramatic shadows that reflect the moral complexities of the trial. In 1937, a movie titled They Won't Forget was released, with earlier proposed names such as In the Deep South, The Deep South, and Death in the Deep South. The film is based on a notorious criminal case from 1913 involving Leo Frank, a Jewish-American mechanical engineer from New York who moved to Atlanta in 1908. Frank was accused of murdering a 13-year-old factory worker, Mary Fagan, who was found dead at the National Pencil Company where Frank served as the director. The movie features Lana Turner, who was a newcomer to Hollywood at the time. She had only been in the city for a month when she was discovered and offered a screen test for the role. Turner's character is based on the real-life figure of Mary Fagan. The police arrested several suspects, including Frank and the factory's janitor, Jim Kinlay. Frank was tried for murder, and the prosecution's case heavily relied on Kinlay's testimony. Kinlay claimed to be an accomplice in the murder, but Frank's defense argued that he was the actual perpetrator. Frank was found guilty and his lawyers appealed the decision, but they were unsuccessful, even at the U.S. Supreme Court level in 1915. However, Governor John M. Slayton stepped in and commuted Frank's sentence to life imprisonment after reviewing the evidence and arguments from both sides. The case received significant national press attention, with many reporters deeming the conviction a miscarriage of justice. This criticism fueled antisemitism and hatred towards Frank within Georgia. Tragically, Frank was kidnapped from prison by a group of armed men in August 1915 and lynched in Marietta, Mary Fagan's hometown. The new governor vowed to punish the lynchers, but nobody was charged. In 1982, Frank's office assistant, Alonzo Mann, came forward and stated that he had witnessed another man moving Mary Fagan's body, supporting the belief that Frank was wrongly convicted. In 1986, Frank was posthumously pardoned by Georgia although he was not officially exonerated of the crime. The case has inspired numerous books, movies, a play, a musical, and a TV miniseries, reflecting its enduring impact on American culture and history. The Leo Frank case even spurred the creation of the Anti-Defamation League and the resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan. Released in 1937, They Won't Forget left a significant imprint on audiences and the film industry. The movie, based on a novel, tackled racial prejudice and injustice, which resonated deeply with viewers. It follows the story of a northern teacher falsely accused of murder in the South, highlighting the regional tensions and biases present during that era. The film's exploration of racial prejudice was unprecedented for its time, making it a topic of discussion and reflection among audiences. The powerful performances and gripping narrative compelled viewers to confront their own biases and consider the destructive consequences of prejudice. Moreover, they won't forget is said to have popularized the term lynch law, drawing attention to the unjust practice of mob violence. This contributed to a broader cultural conversation about racial inequality and social justice. Influencing pop culture, the movie is often cited as the first film noir, a genre known for its dark, cynical themes and moral ambiguity. Its visual style, characterized by dramatic shadows and high contrast lighting, became a hallmark of the film noir genre. 
Additionally, the film's director, Mervyn Leroy, and its leading actress, Mona Turner, saw their careers boosted by its success. Leroy went on to direct other classics, while Turner became a major star. In conclusion, They Won't Forget was more than just a movie. It was a cultural catalyst that sparked important discussions and influenced the film industry. Its exploration of racial prejudice and its innovative visual style continue to resonate today. In 1937, a film now known as They Won't Forget was released, based on the notorious murder trial and lynching of Leo Frank. Initially, director Fritz Lang was offered the project but declined, not wanting to be typecast as an expert on lynching after his work on Fury in 1936. The film is inspired by a real-life incident that took place in 1915, which also served as the basis for the musical Parade, which saw a successful Broadway revival in 2023. The movie and its source novel, Death in the Deep South, touch on the suspect's northern background, which was a factor in his lynching. However, unlike the real-life case, the film does not mention that the suspect was Jewish. Furthermore, the character based on Mary Fagan, the real-life victim, is portrayed as a 16-year-old sweater girl in the movie, whereas the actual victim was only 13 years old. Despite these differences, They Won't Forget remains a powerful and thought-provoking film, shedding light on the complex and often troubling dynamics of race, region, and justice in America's past and present. Its enduring legacy is a testament to the power of cinema to explore and illuminate even the most difficult and challenging aspects of our shared history. They Won't Forget, a 1937 movie, received considerable critical acclaim upon its release. The film, which marked the directorial debut of Mervyn Leroy, was praised for its incisive commentary on racial prejudice and mob mentality. Noted critic Frank Nugent of the New York Times lauded the movie as a powerful and stirring indictment of a community's hysteria. The film stars, including Claude Rains and Lana Turner, also drew considerable praise. Turner, in her first major film role, was hailed for her captivating performance, which helped establish her as a rising star in Hollywood. Rains, a seasoned actor, delivered a nuanced portrayal of a manipulative prosecutor, further solidifying his reputation as a versatile thespian. They Won't Forget was also recognized with several award nominations. The film received a nod for Best Picture at the 1938 National Board of Review Awards, highlighting its significance in the cinematic landscape of the time. Additionally, it was nominated for Best Sound Recording at the 1938 Academy Awards, underscoring the technical prowess behind the film. These accolades hold great significance for those involved in the film. For Leroy, the positive reception served as a launching pad for a successful directorial career, which included such classics as Little Caesar and The Wizard of Oz. For the film's actors, the recognition helped elevate their profiles in the industry, leading to more prominent roles and opportunities. Moreover, the film's enduring impact extends beyond the individuals involved. As a powerful exploration of racial prejudice, They Won't Forget remains a relevant and thought-provoking piece of cinema resonating with audiences today. The film's critical acclaim and award nominations serve as a testament to its lasting influence and mark it as a milestone in the annals of film history. The film They Won't Forget was a controversial production, initially met with resistance by the local board of review in Atlanta, Georgia, who attempted to prevent its screening across the entire state. The script, based on Ward Green's novel Death in the Deep South, was initially deemed unacceptable by the production code administration due to political sensitivities. However, screenwriter Robert Rawson's rewrites eventually secured the film's approval from the censors. It's worth noting that the storyline of They Won't Forget is inspired by the 1915 murder trial of Leo Frank, a fact that Warner Brothers acknowledged by purchasing the screen rights for 5000 The author, Ward Green, had personally covered the trial as a reporter in Atlanta, Georgia, lending a degree of authenticity to the film's portrayal of the legal proceedings. Despite the opening placard's disclaimer, viewers should be aware of the real-life inspiration behind the movie. In the making of this classic, they won't forget several fascinating stories emerge from behind the scenes. The film marked the debut of Lana Turner, who was discovered while drinking a soda at Top Hat Malt Shop on Sunset Boulevard. A talent scout, seeking someone to play a small role in the movie, approached her. This chance encounter catapulted Turner into stardom. Another intriguing anecdote involves the film's director, Mervyn Leroy. 
known for his meticulous attention to detail. Leroy insisted on authenticity. To create an accurate portrayal of a small southern town, he had the entire set, including every storefront and street, built from scratch in the studio. He even went so far as to import dirt from Georgia to add to the realism. The film's subject matter, based on the real-life case of Leo Frank, a Jewish man falsely accused of murder in 1915, sparked controversy. The production faced protests from various groups, leading to the addition of a disclaimer at the beginning of the film, stating that it was not meant to offend or stereotype any particular race or religion. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew remained dedicated to bringing this powerful story to life. The film's message about prejudice and mob mentality resonated with audiences, making it a significant milestone in Hollywood's exploration of social issues. In 1937, They Won't Forget made its debut, marking significant milestones for three of its cast members. Gloria Dixon and Linda Perry made their first appearances in this movie, embarking on their film careers. Notably, it also featured the first speaking role for a 16-year-old Lana Turner, who would later become a prominent figure in Hollywood. This classic film proved to be a stepping stone for these talented individuals, propelling them into the spotlight of the film industry. They Won't Forget holds a significant place in film history as it's often cited as the first film noir. This 1937 movie, through its compelling narrative and stylistic choices, laid the groundwork for this distinctive genre. The film's exploration of crime and its consequences, along with its atmospheric cinematography, would become hallmarks of film noir. The movie's impact on future filmmaking is evident in the number of directors it influenced. Many filmmakers drew inspiration from its innovative storytelling and visual style. The film's ability to create tension and suspense, even without overt violence, was a lesson learned by many in the industry. Subsequent works inspired by They Won't Forget include films like Double Indemnity, The Maltese Falcon, and The Big Sleep. These films, and many others, borrowed elements from They Won't Forget, contributing to the growth and evolution of the film noir genre. Moreover, the movie's exploration of social issues, such as racial prejudice and the manipulation of the justice system, remains relevant today. It serves as a reminder of the power of film to spark conversation and reflection on societal issues. In essence, they won't forget left an indelible mark on the film industry, shaping the noir genre and influencing future filmmakers. Its exploration of crime, justice, and social issues continues to resonate, making it a classic that continues to inspire and influence. In February 1937, a young actress named Judy Turner, later known as Lana Turner, successfully tested for her part in the movie. She began filming in early March of the same year. This film marked the debut of Aline Jocelyn in the world of cinema. The movie was based on a novel by Ward Green called Death in the Deep South, which itself was inspired by a real-life case to trial and lynching of Leo Frank after the murder of Mary Fagan in 1913. This classic film takes its audience on a journey through a fictionalized account of a true crime, providing a glimpse into the past and the social issues of the time. In 1915, the Leo Frank trial served as the basis for Circle Film Corpus production, Thou Shalt Not Kill. Directed by Hal Reed, the film starred Rose and Charles Coughlin, Reed also created a documentary short, Leo M. Frank, and a short film, Thou Shalt Not Kill, about an accidental killing and wrongful conviction. Other productions inspired by the Frank case include Murder in Harlem and the 1988 NBC miniseries, The Murder of Mary Fagan. Ronald Reagan, father of Maureen, and Michael Reagan with Jane Wyman, resided at 9137 Cordell Drive, Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, with his family. Their estate, built in 1942, was sold for $8.5 million in September 2012. Reagan's daughter, Maureen, passed away on August 8, 2001, due to malignant melanoma at her Sacramento home. Suffering from Alzheimer's disease, Reagan remained unaware of her death, and his wife Nancy chose not to inform him. For the 1956 re-release of this classic, Contemporary 1950s era images of Lana Turner were used in the advertising material to conceal the film's age. In the movie They Won't Forget from 1937, a young actress by the name of Lana Turner made her striking debut. Contrary to popular belief, she was not signed by Warner Brothers, but by director Mervyn Leroy who was working for them at the time. When Leroy moved to MGM, Turner followed him, 
marking the beginning of her successful career. The film opens with two profound quotes, one from Abraham Lincoln and the other from General Robert E. Lee, emphasizing the themes of liberty, equality, and the preservation of the Union. These quotes are inscribed on a plaque at the base of General Lee's statue in a park, setting the stage for the story that unfolds. The use of these quotes serves as a reminder of the historical context in which the film is set and the issues that are explored throughout. Did They Won't Forget leave a lasting impression on you? This classic movie from 1937 might have influenced your perspective on cinema, and we'd love to hear about it. Share your experiences and memories related to this film that left a mark on you personally. Perhaps you were captivated by the storyline, the actor's performances, or the historical context. Maybe this movie even inspired you to explore other films from the same era or genre. Whatever your connection to They Won't Forget, we'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation and engage with others who share your passion for cinema. Like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on our cinematic explorations. Let's celebrate this classic movie and its impact on our lives. We can't wait to